we're going to start breaking this down. From NPR, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, champion of gender equality, dies at 87. I'm going to show you her uh, one of her, her. I'm going to show you her dying wish that NPR has included that I was shocked to hear. According to NPR, they say just days before her death, as her strength waned, Ginsburg dictated this statement to her granddaughter, Clara Spera, quote, my most fervent wish is that I will not be replaced until a new president is installed. Okay, <laughs> that is shockingly 2020. Yep. And uh, uh, we're, 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 we're going to start getting into, we're, we're going to lighten up in a little bit. I want to make sure we're being respectful and delicate as we talk about her losing her life for sure. But we're going to uh, uh, lighten up and talk about the future in a second. But I just want to say I'm sh- that, that quote to me is... Yeah, it's bordering on the absurd. I, I can't. It's it's almost shocking that they that's the statement that was put out. But uh, let me just read a little bit. They say Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the demure firebrand who in her 80s became a legal, cultural and feminist icon has died. The Supreme Court announced her death, saying the cause was complications from cancer. Architect of the legal fight for women's rights in the 1970s, Ginsburg subsequently served 27 years on the nation's highest court, becoming its most prominent member. Her death will inevitably set in motion what promises to be a nasty and tumultuous political battle over who will succeed her, and it thrusts the Supreme Court vacancy into the spotlight of the presidential campaign. She knew what was to come. Ginsburg's death death will have have profound consequences for for the court and the country. Inside the court, not only is the leader of the liberal wing gone, but with the court about to open a new term, Chief Justice John Roberts no longer holds the controlling vote in closely contested cases, though he has consistently conservative, uh, though he has a consistently conservative record on most cases. He has split from fellow conservatives in a few important ones this year, casting his vote with liberals, for instance, to at, uh, to at least temporarily protect the so-called dreamers from deportation by the Trump administration to uphold a major abortion precedent and to uphold bans on large church gatherings during the coronavirus pandemic. But with Ginsburg gone, there is no clear court majority for those outcomes. Now, the most important thing that needs to be mentioned as we enter an election cycle that will likely be disputed is that the Supreme Court now skews conservative, very likely meaning if this if if uh, if, if we go to a contested election and the court must decide, I think they're going to side with Trump. And what do you, what, what, well, I'm 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 a bit I'm a bit. <laughs> look, we 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 got 50 billion stories here. We've yeah. got who's who's Trump going to pick? Amy Coney Barrett, conservative. W- what will the left's reaction be? Let me just ask you right away, uh, just off of uh, your general your general reaction. Both you guys, let's just get into it. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, obviously, you, the prayers are with her family uh, and the repose of her soul. And you, you know, she she'd been battling cancer for a long time. And I think NPR hit the nail on the head when they talked about her being a cultural icon. Right. And I, I, I don't think I'm going to blow anyone's mind when I say that I don't necessarily agree for the sorts of things she stood for to be a cultural icon. But right. I think it's important to recognize that she is. And I mean, I think this is, you know, we, we chat about it a little bit before the show, but this is going to be an enormous gut punch to millions and millions of people across the country. And I think for a lot of people, that will be the cultural and, you know, cultural import. But Tim, I think you're right. I think one of the biggest things that might get overlooked here is if there are people who don't believe in the integrity of the Supreme Court as a result of her leaving, which I think a lot of people wrongfully will, we're going to have to deal with that on election day. Careful. Pounding. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's not just that they would side with Trump if, if it goes if the if the vote gets contested. We're looking at a mail we're looking at mail in ballots. I've talked to my progressive friends. They think it's totally safe and they don't know anything about the stories that have emerged. Like in, in Patterson, New Jersey, for instance, they voided the election. There is something like a million primary ballots have been discounted or were late. The New York Times right. reported this uh, in Baltimore. I think it was 68,000 ballots were held for five days, but the Postal Service wasn't delivering them. There have been numerous errors. And now they might side with Donald Trump, the court. However, the left might view it as illegitimate. Yep. But the court's missing the key vote. Right. How can it? And what if they split? What if it goes 4-4? Four, four? If it goes 4-4. Four, four. I mean, what, what do you do, <laughs> oh, man, do you do? dude? And I mean, I think we, you know, you, you can come into it to, to the election and say, hey, even if you, even if you're someone who is worried about it, then at least we've got the Supreme Court to be able to moderate this thing. And now we don't know that we'll have the numbers. And if we do have the numbers, you're right. I mean, think about it. Like we, uh, we saw how upset people were in 2016. And now imagine all of those people not only are upset, but they're also thinking that the results of the election are illegitimate and that they're not fair. And that, of course, it's Donald Trump's fault. And then. So so the election breaks. 
Mail-in voting is contested on both sides. On election day, Donald Trump landslides. It's called the red mirage. Republicans are going to vote, go vote in person. Democrats vote by mail. That means on election night, Trump wins in a landslide. Yep. Over the next several days, the Democrat votes start pouring in, and then it flips to Joe Biden. Donald Trump then starts contesting some of these mail-in votes, saying some were discounted, some were counted that shouldn't have been. Those voters, those signatures don't match. Yep. You know, we saw in Pennsylvania, they ruled signature verification out the window. Right. They now can't disqualify a vote if the signature doesn't match, arguing they should be able to give the voter a chance to fix it. So what? It takes two months to fix all the votes? Not going to happen. Trump's going to sue. Joe Biden's going to sue. It's going to go to the Supreme Court. And what if it goes 4-4? I don't think it would because they lost Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But Roberts, I was, that's Roberts the other thing could too, go is liberal. It's Roberts. And I think conservatives have, have learned their lesson time and time again that Roberts is not some sort of stalwart conservative yeah, that we should put our faith him. in. Yeah. Could, yeah. You, could you imagine if it finally goes to the court and they go 4-4 on this? What do you do? I don't even know. That's the other thing, too, is I don't you, you would have legal fights about how to resolve the legal fight. The Supreme Court is not in a position to actually solve the problem with only eight members. Trump needs to appoint someone now. And this person needs to be confirmed now, 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 now. The problem with that, though, is that the left is going to be it, we, we, we were talking about the White House siege, right? Yeah. Did you hear about this? Pro oh, okay, yeah. So for those that aren't familiar, a group called Adbusters, the magazine, had put out a call for uh, what it was a 50 days of protest called the White House siege in front of the White House. It was supposed to be nonviolent, but I guess nobody was buying it because they called it a siege. So they changed it to 50 days of improvisational jazz because they really did not want violence. I, I can respect that. Peaceful protest is cool. It's cool. Sure. But it was announced by the General Assembly, the activists in D.C., that due to Donald Trump, they would be canceling the, the event because they felt like free speech, free speech was under attack and all that stuff. If there was anything that could ignite a legitimate 50 day siege, and I don't mean like jazz or nonviolent protest. I mean, quite literally people shaking the fences. They were pounding on the doors yep. of the Supreme Court when Brett Kavanaugh was getting it was uh, it was the Supreme Court or what building was it? Um, I think it was in the Senate. The Senate. Wasn't the Senate, it? The yeah, Senate they were trying to get into the Senate. Building. Right. They yeah. were banging on the doors. Yep. Oh, here it comes. And that, and I mean, obviously the Kavanaugh appointment was huge and it was historic. It was important, but it's, it's, it pales in comparison. I mean, it's not even close. Like this is, there, we've never had something like this in terms of a Supreme Court appointment. And so, yeah, I, I think everything's out the window. And on top of that, you've got all of these people, be they political or otherwise, who have been cooped up for six, seven, eight months. Oh man. All they dude. want to do is get out of the house. Are we in a simulation? You it's, know? Yeah, it's, we were talking I'm, about I'm, this too. I'm half kidding. I'm only half kidding. It's I mean, heavy-handed. If it is, it's too much. Would you say the writers of 2020 <laughs> yeah, were the, bold to put this right before the election? It's, it's like you gotta you gotta rein in the audience a little bit more, <laughs> right? We've got we've got the election coming up. We're not even into December, and if you're gonna throw something that big out, already knowing you've got a planned election coming up in one of your episodes in the future, Dude. the writers are, are ham-fisted at this point in my no, book. no. I kind of feel like it's a it's Game of Thrones early season worthy, yeah. where like you're watching and all of a sudden you're like, no way they just just killed oh how did they kill the that red wedding yeah yeah exactly. the red wedding they exactly. killed everyone yes. this is our red wedding but <laughs> but i mean at least well the democrats least, are saying that you can, oh god seriously but you can at least you can put the book down you can turn the tv off this is life i mean i'm i'm gonna go back to i'm gonna go back I to know. my apartment in dc and it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be protests it's gonna be court you know cordoned off city streets it's you know I, and i really want to stress uh i know there's a lot of partisan people npr says it's gonna get nasty I have I have tremendous respect for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, man. I really do. She she battled that cancer like one of the strongest one of the strongest people uh, I've ever seen suffering from uh, you know the, the illness, and she kept she kept winning and she and she 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 uh, she uh, withstood it for as long as she possibly could, and it yeah. was impressive. It was remarkably impressive, and I think she had pneumonia too. Yeah, at some point, she something did. Like that. Yeah, she was hospitalized. I think once, maybe a couple times. I was impressed with the sheer willpower, and as much as, like you mentioned, you know, look, we don't have to agree with her politically. In fact, right. we can very much disagree and be worried oh, yeah. about her politics. But uh, I, th I think, you know, look, we, we we are Americans first and foremost, and that sheer willpower to try and stand throughout the election was impressive. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I know a lot of people are probably happy that Trump will not get to make an appointment, but I, I hope people recognize we can be, you know, sad to see her go and, and prayers and respect to her family and all that while still being like, OK, you know, without reveling in that, yep. mm -hmm. you know, we're looking to the future and, and what's going to come next. And uh, already we're seeing uh, a lot of photos. 
popping up of who comes next. Yeah. So first and foremost, let me see. Uh, we have uh, this photo right <laughs> oh, here from yeah. uh, Cassandra Fairbanks tweeted just this photo. And uh, we all know what it is. It's it's Amy Coney Barrett. So uh, I believe Trump will appoint her. We can also see this. Take a look right here. Trending politics. 2.69 million tweets. No, no, no. <laughs> We got to be we got to be oh, careful man. because we are going to have a lot of laughter going on here at the expense of many of the people on the left. Yes. And I, I want to, you know, just say it's like, you know, it, it's not at the expense of Ruth Bader Ginsburg in any capacity. Mm -mm. But uh, seeing the reaction now, nearly th what, 2.7 million tweets of no, no, no. What did you just say? It was like it's like Hillary, Cl Hillary Clinton election night all over. Yeah, it's, it's going to be that times a thousand. Right. It's it's going to be the you, I'm sure you all remember that image of the, the individual wailing Screaming at the sky. Person. Right. Yes. Yeah. That was the inauguration, I think it was. Yeah. yeah or yeah. was it? I, I thought it was when they called the election. Was it? But I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong, too. I but don't know. but it's it's going to be that. And I mean, you know, we, we were talking before, like it's it, it feels almost a little bit crass to have to dive into what the political implications of this are but the political implications are enormous you can't escape them especially with especially with what 46 days to the election who did who did trump uh, trump chose a handful of people for his new list and he included do you, and i know he chose tom cotton because i'm going to mention his quote in a second yeah but do you know who some of the other picks were that um yeah so comey barrett i think was on the list uh, mike lee from utah i believe was on the list there's one other senator i think as well Wasn't it, Cruz? it was Ted yeah, Cruz. Yeah, yeah. it was Ted Cruz, who like in his own respect is a pretty impressive constitutional law scholar by all indications yeah, yeah, yeah. and so like these are it's complicated because they're political right but they're they're people with serious uh, at least legal bona fides if not judicial bona fides um, and then there were a number of other people on there who I think are, are circuit court judges. Um, and then there were a few, I think there was a big push among a lot of conservative legal advocates who were fighting for Clarence Thomas clerks, right? People like oh, there was wow. there was a big push um, after, especially after, you know, Gorsuch, I think had made a couple of decisions that folks didn't like. Kavanaugh's made a couple of decisions people didn't like. And so there's been a big push by a lot of, a lot of the legal talking heads in DC to say, you know what? The only one we can trust is Clarence Thomas. And the only people we should be putting on this list His. are people who have clerked for him. Well, so uh, a lot of people think he's going to choose uh, Amy Coney Barrett and I think I I would I would have to say so. Now, b before we get into it, we, we can actually pull up uh, some information about her because, again, people think it will be her. He selected one of the people on his short list was Tom Cotton. And then he and then you, we saw I think some of these other people said, I, I appreciate it. I have no interest in leaving the Josh Senate. Holly, yeah. Josh, yeah. Josh Hawley. Josh Hawley. Yeah. And uh, and Ted uh, and, and Tom Cotton said that. What does he say? The days of Roe v. Wade are numbered. or something? Yeah, exactly. He's like, well, the days of Roe v. Wade should be over. And I would be <laughs> he also said I, I would be honored to serve my country. And he's like, as someone who has served their country for a long time, I'd be honored to serve my country in any capacity. Ooh. If he's got it, he's got it. You can, if, like, if Trump <laughs> picks Tom Cotton after Tom Cotton said that. It is going to be war in D.C. Like you, 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 you I'm, I'm I, I we've talked about conflict before. We've talked about civil unrest. But Tom Cotton straight up said it. Days of Roe v. Wade are, are numbered or something to that effect. Yeah. If if Trump says, yeah, Tom Cotton and they, they and they say he's moving forward and, and they set up a Senate confirmation within a month of the election, it is going to be. It's impossible to overstate what that would look like. I know. I don't even I don't even I'm, I'm scared to say what I think it would result in. And don't forget. Tom Cotton is persona non grata enough to the left that yeah. when he wrote an op-ed voicing an opinion that is shared by I almost 60% of Americans, you had the guy who runs the op-ed page resign and you had a you had a, a staff a, revolt. Yeah, you had a staff revolt, not just at the New York Times, but everywhere. There are other people who backed him up who lost their jobs, right? It, it's, it rolled journalism in an insane way. That was over an op-ed. Take a look at this from the Hill. Tom Cotton, after Trump names him potential Supreme Court nominee, <laughs> quote, it's time for Roe v. Wade to go 100. I'm, I'm estimating, but it's 100. I'm rounding up 110,000 shares yeah. on the Hill from September 9th. I, I, I got to say, man, when you make a joke about this, the 2020 season writers, you mean to tell me that Donald Trump put out a list a week ago where the guy said Roe v. Wade's out. Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies a week later. If he picks this dude and the Supreme Court is split four to four with with uh, Robert siding with the liberals against Trump and there's no clear winner and no way to resolve this. Yeah. 
This is an existential crisis for this country, man. And this is an existential crisis if everything goes well between now and then, <laughs> right? The, I think one of the things that unfortunately we we haven't always done a great job of in 2020 is recognizing that it always gets worse, right? Yeah. It only like it, it only gets worse and deeper in ways we don't understand or expect. What if coronavirus comes back worse <laughs> oh, in, no. in the fall and winter? What if what if what if flu season makes it right, worse? Dude, There's so much, dude. The aliens are coming. The the, the <laughs> ship's gonna <laughs> land in a week, and we're gonna be like, thank you. But as a DC resident, <laughs> um, if Tom Cotton and don't be wrong, I love. Tom Cotton, huge Tom Cotton fan. I've been, I've been boosting him for a long time. If he gets nominated to the Supreme Court and the protests start, I think I'm rooting for for aliens to show up. <laughs> I think that I think that would probably make my day to day life a lot easier. Let me let me tell you, dude. Uh, a while uh, a while ago, or beginning of the year, I started looking at properties far away from cities, and I found one, and it was very very difficult to set up and buy. And we're officially set up. Uh, as soon as we wrap up this show, we're hopping in a car, driving for several hours. And I'm going to wake up at the new facility. We're going to start setting up the new studio because I do not want to be anywhere near these cities. And after, look, we can talk about Antifa. We can talk about the Proud Boys. Yeah. And I lived in New York. People were planting bombs. Like, there was just crazy people. So I wanted to get away from these cities as the political tensions flared up. But this is the sharpest spike in emotional shock we have seen in the entire year. Yeah. Like, everybody knew it was coming. It was a, it was a time bomb. Mm -hmm. And now it's dropped. And it dropped a week after Trump, Tom Cotton said, it's wait, 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 wow, man. I'm telling you, if you were if you were writing 2020 as a show and all you were trying to do is freak your, your show watchers out, that's what you do. I mean, I don't know what you would do different. And one of the one of the other problems with the two is it comes at a time when people are already emotionally frayed. Everyone right. is burnt out. Everyone is worn down. They're worn down by politics. They're worn down by coronavirus. They're worn down by the lockdown and everything else swir swirling around it. And now you throw this into the mix. I got to say, I'm kind of freaking out, man. Yeah, me too. This is this was like, so uh, uh, for those that are listening, we we're, we're sitting here. I had like a Gatorade, and we were like <laughs> making jokes. And oh, I was man. like, I think we're gonna talk about you know, there's this thing with Joe Rogan that's really interesting. And then all of a sudden, I see the tweet breaking. It Wait, was what's, what's here's up? what you did. So you opened up Twitter, and you're like, all right, so what are we gonna talk about? And you were like, oh. I felt like it was the cartoon. No, I think I said, of, "Oh my god, oh my god, yes. oh my god!" I put my hands on my head, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then, and then, and then, like, Lydia's like, "What? What What's happened?" Wrong? And I was like, Ruth, "Ruth Bader Ginsburg died." And I was like, "Oh, this oh is my god, this is crazy." And you started it by saying. Uh, What's the biggest story of the day? Yeah, and we, uh, Lydia and I, we're like, we're like, we're like yeah, kicking around our heads. We're like, I don't know, man. I mean, this Rogan thing's big. Like, there's, there's a few other things going on. I think, I, what was it? Chris Rock said something like that. That was <laughs> the kind of news we were kicking around. Like, I think yeah, Chris Rock this said is a, this is a big, this is a big news. And you, yeah, hands on the head. And you were like, I was, I was like, I was a like former OC actress from that TV show yeah, came yeah. out yes. in support of Trump. Right, which is cool. <laughs> that, that was it. Yeah. And I was like, we're gonna have a fun conversation about like walk away and like never Trumper and stuff. And uh, but but here, check this out. This is what's, this is what's happened. So over on Twitter. We have the trending tab. Number one is Rip Ruth Bader Ginsburg, mm -hmm. with with absolute respect. Number yep. two is Ruth Bader Ginsburg, nearly 500,000 tweets, followed by Supreme Court. McConnell, Ooh, notorious yeah. RBG, rest in power, rest in peace, RBG, not RBG, Rip RBG, Rip Ruth, Kavanaugh, and then Puerto Rico, which is still big news, and then it goes to Rosh Hashanah and a bunch of other things, but then it goes back to Murkowski. Like, uh, anyway, the point is, look, Tom Cotton's trending. Roe v. Wade is trending. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. With with now, nearly three million tweets is trending. trending. Amy crazy. Coney Barrett trending. Moscow Mitch, RB. The entire trending tab, up 29 trends, yep. save for like four things are, uh, are that, well, first of all, it's all politics except for Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is political. Puerto Rico is not related to Supreme Court. So it's like 27 of 30 trends are all the Supreme Court. This is the most uh, significant political development of the year, I'd say, right? Uh, it, it has to be. And think of about the, how insane Trump's term, that is. Of Trump's. Uh, yeah. Think about how well, insane that is. That this, that, that we, up until 45 minutes ago, we had not seen the most insane political story we're going to see this year yeah that's funny to me because we were just kind of lamenting how crazy this year had been I was yeah like, oh my gosh this lockdown this crazy stuff if i could go back in time and tell myself you know coronavirus is it is what it is i mean we have the, no uh, idea the great the great triggering is upon us yeah the no 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 twitter trend <sighs> three million amazing. people saying no 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 and they're posting memes of like you know a, a guy wincing wearing a trump hat like oh no trump's gonna do it he's gonna nominate somebody of course he is mm -hmm. but he yeah. has he has to he has and that's the other thing too is i think if if it were more normal times right and, and potentially with a, a more normal president i think what we would all be saying right left center is 
oh God, we can't we can't go into this election without a full Supreme Court. We have to have an odd number of people to make whatever decisions come up. We have 50 different state elections that could all potentially go to the Supreme Court. We can't do that short staffed. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.